everyone, hope you're doing well. Today, it is time to look at the first dev blog for the upcoming update. Now, I'm going to call this update 2.01. If it changes in the future, I'll make sure to uh, change the video titles and all of that stuff. But the main thing to understand is if the common trend uh, is completed, where it goes 197, 199, 2.01, hopefully I won't have to change anything. So today, we're having a look at the Akebono Destroyer Escort. This is going to be a new ship which is coming to the Japanese for rank 2. It is looking like a very very fun machine, very similar to another one that we have uh, in the game already, but that's completely fine. Uh, you know, uh, the rank 2 and 3 has to be bolstered uh, with certain nations, and if um, I'm honest, the Akebono is looking very fun indeed. So the first thing uh, to note about this machine, first of all, is uh, what we're looking at is another post-World War 2 destroyer ex uh, uh, ex escort for Japan. And uh, when we look at it, uh, the basic story behind it is after World War II, Japan was actually completely prohibited from having its own military. But as the Cold War became a reality, uh, Japan was allowed to raise a small force for self-defense purposes, basically to be able to defend itself against invasions. There was always a worry, especially in Japan, that the Soviets would invade at some point, so therefore having some some form of defense force which would be used as kind of a way to uh, well slow down the Soviets or whoever wanted to invade until people like America were able to turn up and bail them out and part of that idea was the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force. This was formed in 1954 and with this newly formed Navy it needed new ships so the Japanese uh, decided to construct some of these ships and as as a result of these ideas, the planned ideas, uh, the 1953, uh, they laid down uh, some ideas for construction of three new destroyer escorts, uh, two separate designs, which differed primarily in the propulsion system used, and the Akebono, which we see here uh, as the single ship of the batch to use traditional steam propulsion, was laid down in December of 1954. It was commissioned into service in March of 19. 1956, and it became among the first domestically produced Japanese military vessels to enter service after World War II. It served for 20 years, and then it was decommissioned in 1976, and in 1981, the ship was taken apart and uh, sold for scrap and officially stricken from the Naval Register in 1986. So, you know, it's it had a long service, it did its job, uh, which is uh, good to see. Uh, one thing that I will point out about this dev blog, which is very sad to see, is this pros and cons is back, and it looks like they've just decided this thing doesn't have any cons. This is why I generally don't like this system, especially when it's talking about premiums that, you know, Gaijin want to sell. This is obviously not a premium vehicle. This is a standard tech tree vehicle, but generally uh, <laughs> this setup doesn't really work um, when uh, you can't think of any cons of a vehicle. I understand the idea of having a quick thing that people can read, but the idea that people are going to go into this and just think, oh, well, there isn't any cons. I'll tell you what the cons are. This thing will be able to go up against 4-7 destroyers, and they will have more firepower, they will have a longer range, they will be able to annihilate you. It has a lack of torpedoes on it, but unfortunately the cons have not been here. So... Let's talk about this machine in its entirety. What does it offer? Well, it's actually very similar to a ship that we have in-game already, which was added recently, and also its sister ship, the Ikazuchi. And uh, the Ikazuchi comes in at rank 2 at the end of the line, and I'm guessing the Akebono is going to come after it because it's technically a slightly better machine. What differs uh, the Akebono from the uh, uh, from the Ikazuchi is the actual propulsion system. So basically, the Akebono has a more traditional steam propulsion system instead of the diesel one, and uh, this gives it 18,000 horsepower, and therefore it's able to have a higher top speed. Uh, it can go 28 knots, which is approximately 58 kilometers an hour, so therefore it will be a little bit faster uh, than, its, uh, than its sister ship. 
The other thing as well is it has a slightly higher crew, so therefore in terms of the game that'll give it more survivability. It has 193 sailors compared to the Ikazuchi's 153. So this, in game terms, is just going to be a direct upgrade over its sister ship, um, because the things that it shares, you know, are very similar, but there are no, um, I suppose, decreases uh, overall in terms of the ship itself. So if this isn't a higher BR or the same uh, BR as the Kazuchi, it would be incredibly surprising. And if it is the same BR as this, then we have to once again call into question what is the reason to use a ship like the Kazuchi, unless you're running a lineup with it, I suppose, uh, because both ships will be pretty good. So let's talk about the main armament of this machine. This thing has a pair of 3-inch cannons. They are obviously 76.2 millimeters, and you may think, well, that doesn't seem very powerful, especially for a machine which is uh, boasting uh, the fact that, you know, it's a destroyer escort, this thing is going to have to go up against destroyers in the game. But what you have to understand about these 3-inch guns is that they have an incredibly fast reload. Uh, they have an automated reload mechanism and this gives them a rate of fire of 50 rounds per minute. So technically, with the two guns, that's 100 rounds per minute. You can fire, uh, you can fire shells nearly every second out of each gun, and you can just keep laying down the firepower. Now, this means that if this thing comes up against even lower tier destroyers, it is able to pump out enough firepower to be able to deal with them. And against stuff lower than it, such as PT boats or battle boats, at range or or even close range, it can really deal a lot of damage. Since these aren't over or equal to 100 millimeters, though, it does mean that they do not get the hull break ability, so you are going to have to just keep peppering ships until they die, but uh, after using these 3-inch guns, they definitely do enough damage to be able to justify, um, you know, using them over some conventional weaponry. The other thing it also has on the ship is a dual set of bofers, and uh, these obviously are 40 millimeters, and they have access to pretty much every round in the book that you want. The three-inch guns themselves have access to HE, AP, and HEVT, so if you come up against anything with a bit of armor, you can deal with it. If you want to use them as a multi-purpose gun, so trying to shoot down aircraft, you can also do that too. Too. you know all of these options are available but the 40 millimeter bofers um, they will have AA capabilities these will mainly probably be used as an AA capability and um, they uh, because of their AA capability I, I apologize uh, because they have HEVT rounds and with the recent fix to HEVT rounds they actually work a lot better one thing that I found with machines like the Udachi and also other similar ones which have uh, these style of guns on is generally the HEVT would just completely miss planes coming in but now with the recent change where they've uh, fixed kind of the fuse sensitivity and it actually hits planes they are incredibly deadly even at range uh, so even though this thing only has two uh, 40 millimeter bofers as a secondary armament that easily should be you know enough to uh, deal with stuff another thing to also mention if we have a look at at least the model this isn't confirmed in the dev blog but I'm guessing Guessing it's going to happen. You can see here it has some form of bomb mortar uh, on the front of it, uh, which should be pretty fun. Uh, you know, you'll be able to throw them out. I still don't really understand the point of bomb mortars in the game. Maybe at some point, you know, uh, maybe at some point they'll come to fruition and be useful. But at least uh, in gaming terms right now, uh, they there is no real use uh, for them, especially since this thing, um, the Ikazuchi, and also I'm sure the Akibono will get a destroyer uh, spawn, so the longer spawns instead of the shorter spawn so it won't be able to take over the game like stuff like the k2 used to and uh, therefore you won't be able to use that bomb mortar against anything that's close to you because you'll be mainly fighting over long range uh, so yeah it's uh, kind of a little bit odd um, <laughs> when it comes to its uh, addition but it's uh, completely fine the fact that this is coming in at rank 2 as well does mean that it comes after a lot of actually quite fun machines for japan but they do all have a 
problem. Their RP costs are kind of through the roof. And I understand how like the naval grind works. You are basically grinding for each of the types of machine. So instead of it being like a gradual vertical process where, <clears throat> where it gets more and more as you go along, instead it gives people more access to like light cruisers and heavy cruisers at a much cheaper research compared to the higher echelons of other nations when it comes to ground and aviation. But the thing is, when it comes to stuff like the Akebono and also the Ikazuchi, I really hope that they, uh, with the addition of stuff like this, we get a reduction in the amount of RP that stuff like this costs and also stuff like the Chikugo, uh, so therefore more people can have a go at these machines. Because right now, um, stuff like the Ikazuchi and when the Akebono comes in, it's very hard to justify them when, uh, when it's either, well, you could, you know, research one of these or a Megami class, you know, it's it's very hard to make a, make a, a case for something like this um, at the time, uh, especially since it has the limited research of only being able to research rank 3, 2, and 1 because of the fact that it's a rank 2 machine. So hopefully in the future uh, we'll see a reduction in these, uh, so therefore you know people will give it a go. Uh, these things don't really have a lot of armor, uh, so they're going to really get punched hard, and since they are limited in the amount of guns that they have, they're not really limited in firepower because as i said the reloads are very good but once you get one gun knocked out uh, once you get two guns knocked out you're pretty much dead in the water and this is a problem that a lot of similar machines have which have this like two dual gun setup once you lose one gun or once you lose your front it's very hard to keep up the firepower especially against stuff like destroyers which can have like up to eight guns firing at you at the same time so that's a little bit of a con uh, the other thing to also mention in the comments is Esmin has confirmed that there will be some T-72 action this patch. As we said previously, as for what, stay tuned. So, no T-90, but T-72 is definitely good enough. So, that is the first devlog for the new update. Hopefully it's a banger. Hopefully we see stuff like battle cruisers. Hopefully we see stuff that has been uh, mentioned for uh, a long time now in the game. Hopefully, mainly though, we see some improvements to the graphics and some of the mechanics. As always, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Battling Bacon, Blackie, Chris Giltnane, Conte Baraka, Daniel Stanton, Elov Goat, Jay Wilt, Martinez, Trigger Hippie, Universe, Eugens Terry, and also AI'm Devilish and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.